Yo, welcome back everybody to a brand new video here on the second channel. Today we're going to be doing a complete set review of Scarlet and Violet, which is coming out in a couple of weeks. We're actually not even, like, coming out in less, like, than two weeks. Now, um, it's been a while since I've done a set review. This is part of the reason why I wanted to make a second channel is because it allowed me to do more set reviews, something that I just haven't done in a very long time on the main channel. Uh, but this is part of the reason I wanted to make the second channel, right? It allows me to do more set reviews. Let me talk about the set and just kind of sit down and chat while I kind of talk about all the cards, give my opinions on them, how they're going to affect the game and all the good stuff. And it's something that I did miss doing. And it's part of the reason I made the second channel. So I upload that extra content that I wouldn't put on my main channel. But we're going to be reviewing Scarlet and Violet here. So strap in and let's uh, check it out. So, of course, we do have the complete set here. And I am very excited to talk about it. Um, there are cards cut from the set, of course. We do have Mimikyu, Ampharos. Ampharos is a pretty solid card um, that is cut from the set. But we do have the entire set here. Of course, some of y'all probably actually already opened up Scarlet and Violet. Pre-releases did happen this past weekend, so I'm sure y'all have already opened up the set and seen some of the new cards for yourself. So let's start things off here with uh, some of the Pokemon. We got a Heracross here, 10 damage, 30 uh, damage for each energy in your opponent's active's retreat cost. Now, you could play this with Spite Ops, but I don't think it's very strong. It doesn't do a lot of damage. Not very good. We got Breloom here uh, that, unfortunately, is very vanilla and not very good. We've had some pretty cool Breelooms in the past. Uh, we got a new Cacnea here. If this Pokemon is the active, it is damaged by attack. You put three damage on the active. Uh, attacking Pokemon, same thing with the Cacturn. But once again, these cards just unfortunately don't really do too much. We have a new Tropius, which once again isn't great. Uh, we do have Scatterbug, Spupa, and Vivillion. These were actually really good in the uh, pre-release tournament, uh, but not great in standard. Uh, Miracle Powder does uh, 50 flip a coin of heads. Your opponent's active is now affected by a special condition of your choosing. You can obviously pair this uh, with, like, Paralysis. The problem is Gloom and Tangle rotated, which really hurts this card's potential. You can put into play in a single turn, though, thanks to Scatterbug, Spupa, and Vivillion. But unfortunately, because there's no reflip cards right now in the rotation, it's not going to be very good. As a meme deck, maybe if we get like a reflip card back. Not very good. Gold Goats. We got Meow Scarter here with Trick Cloak for one Cullis. You may put energy on your opponent's active into their hand. Once again, nothing too crazy. A pretty vanilla attack. Of course, Meow Scarta Yex on the other hand, that'll be coming out in our June set now. That's looking a lot better. Um,. We got some other cool cards here going down. We got Spide Ops EX, of course, one of the new EXs that I think a lot of people are very excited about. Um, it's got the ability Trap Territory, where your opponent's active retreat is one colorless more. So the first thing you can kind of note about this is that it will basically act as a really good partner for Leafeon VMAX. Leafeon VMAX is going to stick around in rotation, and Leafeon VMAX has, well, fallen off quite a bit. I mean, the last time it was good was probably pre-Fusion Strike. So it's been a while, but this could make Leafeon playable. Leafeon does lose Galarmine, which is a pretty big loss. Actually, Galarmine Spite Ops would have actually been a pretty good deck by itself, but Spite Ops' ability does stack. You can have, like, four of these in play and give your opponent a plus four retreat cost. Then you have the attack Wire Hang for a Grass and a Cullis does 90 plus 30 more damage for each energy in your opponent's retreat cost. So basically, Spite Ops works with itself. So you can even play, like, a quad Spite Ops deck if you wanted to. Uh, which is kind of cool, actually, because your opponent's going to be affected by the ability and you're not, which means you can utilize more useful tech cards of your choice. This would be cool if Yellhorn existed, by the way, but I could even see Spite Ops being its own deck. Um, we'll have to see on that, but definitely a decent partner for Leafeon VMAX. I'm excited to see if people can make Leafeon Spite Ops work. I'm excited. Also pretty cool as a control card. I mean, there are matchups where you can trap something in the active spot with Spite Ops and then kind of just try to run them out of resources. Uh, like Evil Tall and Lugia could be kind of cool. So definitely Spite Ops has potential to be a pretty decent control deck too. We'll have to see what people come up with for Spite Ops control. I'm excited to see if anyone can make that work. Um, but yeah, Spite Ops is a pretty interesting card. I'm excited to try it out. It's also a card that just could be good at any point in the format. Like as we get more cards, could get better. Uh, next up, of course, we do have... Um, our Beliva here, with a pretty cool ability. Uh, you got Fill Oil. When you place Pokemon from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon during your turn, you may heal all damage from one of your Pokemon. So evolving and instantly healing is really cool. Um, now, it's only from one of your Pokemon, not all of your Pokemon. However, you are able to fully heal something. Now, of course, it is a Stage 2, so you have to either evolve it mainly or pay rare candy. But it's a cool ability. If you're playing like something tanky, this actually could be decent. I think I've seen Gardevoir X tech like these in the deck sometimes. Um... We'll have to see if it's good. I mean, as a tank deck, it could be fun. If you can find a good Pokemon to pair this with, it definitely could be a pretty fun deck. Of course, again, being if stage two will always hold it back, but the ability is cute. Uh, next up, of course, we do have Toad's Cruel here. Um, 
nothing crazy. It's got the attack Ominous Tentacles, which does uh, 30, and you move an energy from your opponent's active to one of their bench. So it could be a fun control deck. Of course, you can move energy to stuff like Luminions in the bench if you're not playing against the water deck. You can just move them to Pokemon that aren't going to do anything, which is kind of cute, but overall, it's not great. Uh, again, moving one energy won't really help you, but there are going to be weird matchups where maybe this is good, so... Could be interesting as a weird control card. Probably not, though. I, we need to get a good Tentacruel S card sometime, man. I love Tentacruel. It's one of my favorite Gen 1 Pokemon. Um, next up, of course, we do have Scovillian here. Uh, nothing crazy. Super hot. Yeehaw 90 if your opponent's... If this Pokemon has any Fire Energy on it, does 90 more damage. So you got to figure out a way to get Fire Energy on it. I guess there is the, the new card that moves an energy from your bench. We'll get to that soon, actually, as we're getting into the Fire Pokemon right now. Nothing crazy, though. Um, next up, we got a new Arcanine EX. Very cool card. I actually think this will be playable. Water is in a weird spot right now. Water post-rotation could be okay. I mean, obviously, they do lose stuff like Bucket, which is a big deal. But Water definitely isn't bad in the format. The problem is, though, is stuff like Meridian exists, which kind of gatekeep Water Pokemon from ever being good, um, or as good as they used to be with Palkia. But Arcanine definitely could shine. It's basically Reshizar 2.0. Um, it is a Terrestrial, so it can't be damaged on the bench, which... Who knows? That might end up being useful, I guess. But its main attacks here are both good. We got Raging Claws for 2 fire. Does 30 plus 10 more damage for each damage on this Pokemon. It does have 280 HP, so it does have a ton of health. And you also have Bright Flame that does 250. Pair that with a Choice Belt, you're able to one-shot V-Stars. And that's actually kind of decent. Um, it is tanky. Again, 280 HP is a lot. You can pair it with Basin and the new uh, Fire Pokemon, which we're shortly going to get to. So I do like it. It's very reminiscent of Rushizard. Um, Welder does not exist, so obviously it doesn't have Welder. And it is a stage one that evolves from a basic Pokemon that's not a two-prizer, which is one of the things that actually gives me hope for this type of card, because obviously if it evolved from, like, I don't know, Arcanine V, right? It's like, okay, I go second. Oh, you get the first boss KO, two prize lead. All right, probably lose the game. Evolving from a Growlithe is pretty sick. I actually have high hopes in Arcanine. I do like it. I think it's a pretty cool card. It's kind of hard to play against because, again, if you hit it too hard, you can get knocked out by that first attack. Next up, we got Houndoom, nothing crazy. We got Torkoal, nothing crazy. It does 80 plus reach, 80 for each Fire Energy on this Pokemon. The Edifle of a Coin. Reminiscent of Maractus. This is going to be a fun meme deck, but again, without Glimwood Tangle around, it kind of sucks, but maybe we'll get a... I, I assume we will get, like, a reflip card eventually. I got to imagine we will. They're just really cool cards to have, so there's a world where Torkoal will be playable again one day. All right, we got Skeledurge here. Of course, not as good as EX, but it's interesting. You got Fiery Vocals doing 50, attach up the two base energy from discard to your Pokemon we like, and then 190, so kind of vanilla. I think I just said it was interesting. I lied. I capped. It's not interesting. And then, of course, we got a pretty playable card here with Armor Rogue. This card actually is looking pretty decent. As often as you like, during your turn, you may move a fire energy from one of your bench Pokemon to your active. So basically you pair this with Basin, you pair this with Pivot, pivot cards, you can kind of pivot between your attackers, move the energy to the new attacker, and it's good with Magma Basin too. It actually gets you an extra energy in play basically, because you can play Basin for a fire, attach for turn, move that Basin energy to your active. So really cool ability. I've already seen a lot of cool lists in Japan utilize this card, and I'm expecting some cool lists in America to also do the same thing. I definitely think it's a playable card, and it gives fire a little bit of a boost, and fire could be be okay again water i mean water is still decent but again with something like maridan existing it's gonna be hard for water to kind of keep us relevant as it used to be and without water being as relevant a card like this could succeed in the format so definitely excited for this card to come out i've already seen some cool lists in japan and i'm hoping we see some cool lists maybe in america but definitely a pretty fine card if you ask me i think it's actually the the best fire non-ex pokemon in the set that's not arcanine um, next up, we got the water Pokemon. We got Slowbro here. I like the card. It's actually fascinating. It's got the ability Strange Behavior. As often as you like, during your turn, you may move a damage counter from one of your Pokemon to this Pokemon. So you heal 90 from your active. Now you can play this with something like Cheryl. Scubanet would have been cool with this card, obviously. You could play it with Serena too, I guess, Radiant Serena. I do like the ability though, and I'm actually curious to see if people can make this work. Um, it might struggle against Lost Box because like you don't want to give your, you know, save Sableye free food, but I don't know, man. It's a cool ability, and I'm really interested to see if somebody makes this work. I'm definitely going to toy around with some slow bro ideas. I don't know what the best way to play it is yet, but very fascinated by this card. It, it's a self-healing card, which is kind of cool, and I definitely want to give it a try when it comes out. Um, we'll have to see if it ends up working. Next up is Gyarados EX, another new EX Pokemon. Same thing as Arcanine with that ability. Now, this card could have been good if Frostmoth was around, and Goon also was around. So, it's got the attack Tyrannical Tail doing 180 damage. If your opponent's active, already has any damage on it, does 180 more damage. Now, that attack cost is atrocious. However, you can build it up with Palkia V-Star plus double turbo energy. The problem is, there's no Galarian Zigzagoon in the format, so you can't just go, like, 
goon ping anymore to attack. You have to use Halucha or set up damage some other way. Unfortunate, but it's a pretty strong card. I mean, it's got a lot of HP. 300 HP is a ton of health and does a lot of damage. It can one-hit KO stuff. Now, this actually might be a good card when we get the next set. Of course, Rain Dance is coming back in the next set, in our June set. And this might make Gyarados good. So, for now, Gyarados will be a fun meme in Palkia. But when we get the new Rain Dance Stage 2 in the June set, this actually could become a good card. Now, again, it does lose Goon. Goon would have been insane with this card for the record. But losing Goon means you have to play with Halucha, which isn't terrible, but it's not the same as Goon. Because, you know, if you want to attack the active, you can't. So... Or you can, but you just can't do the one shot. It sets up on the bench. But I'm definitely fascinated by Gyarados EX. I'm really excited for this card to maybe be good in the next set. I mean, 300 HP is super tanky. 300 HP and one-shotting things is nothing to slap about, uh, especially when we get that Rain Dance. So for now, keep Gyarados on the back burner. It will eventually be decent when we get the next set. But for now, it's probably just going to be a bit of a meme. But definitely, I would I would may not invest in these, but definitely pick up some Gyaradoses while they'll be cheap when Scarlet Vile comes out. Because, again, they will get better in the next set. New Float Soul, nothing crazy, just Hydro Pump, just doing 50 plus 20 for each water, nothing too nothing too crazy. Aloma Mola, we're never going to get a good Aloma Mola card. Um, never going to get a new Bruxious card either, that's not very good either, just too many memes. Um, we got Quaquavel, pretty cool card here, it's got a really cool ability. Uh, during your turn, you may attach a basic energy from your hand to one of your Pokemon. So you can attach an extra energy, now maybe this could be good with Gyarados EX, I don't know. Uh, it's a cool ability though, energy acceleration and the ability is always really good and Maybe it could be decent in the rotation. There's a lot of energy acceleration cards already in the format, like Arceus V-Star, Mirage Gate, Gardevoir, both Gardevoirs, the EX and the Shining Arcana one, right? So, a lot to see if this card ends up seeing play. Ability's okay, though. Um, definitely going to give it a try when it comes out. Next up, we got Wugtrio, one of probably the coolest cards in the set. With the attack, sea tunneling, you flip three coins, reach heads, discard the top three cards of your opponent's deck. It is a crime and a half that this card had to come out when Glenwood Tangle rotated, or else this legit could have been a really fun meme uh, mill deck. But yes, because we do lose Glenwood Tangle, this card is going to be a little awkward at first. Again, I I expect Pokemon to eventually give us another reflip type card sometime in the future because it's just there's so many fun flipping effects in the game right now that like. There's no way they don't give us one. Like, they're just fun. And there's a reason why coin flip attacks haven't been super meta recently, because they're never always good to rely on. But I really hope that we get Gloomwood back or Victini with the ability where you can reflip. I really hope we get something like that in the next set, because I really have high hopes for a, a fun mill deck like this. Milling three cards is insane. If you flip three heads, you mill nine cards. That is ridiculous. This card is going to be so fun to try out. It's just a shame that Gloomwood Tangle had to rotate when it came out. All right, next up, we got CT in here as a stage one. Uh, sweeping Tackle doing 200 minus uh, 20 for each damage on it. It is a pretty bulky stage one Pokemon that does a lot of damage, but with Frostmoth rotating, it probably won't be very good. We got Dondonzo here. Pretty interesting card with Vent Wraith doing 50 damage for each Tatsugiri in your discard pile. So if you have four in there, you're doing 200 damage. Not bad on a basic Pokemon with 160 HP. Now, the problem is... It works with double turbo. So you can use with you can do 180 per one. So gonna be a fun meme deck for sure. Definitely excited to try this card out. Um as a one prize deck. There's no way to really consistently get these in the discard though. So what we'll to see. Uh next up we got Magnazone X. Now, I pulled this in my pre-release. You know what? It's it's kind of a mid card, but it could be decent. I mean, it is a bulky stage two Pokemon with 330 HP, a lot of health, and the attack energy crush doing 50 damage for each energy on all of your opponent's Pokemon. Honestly, not terrible. A lot of decks in the new format will have energy in play. I mean, you got Arceus, you got Gardevoir EX, right? Gardevoir really capitalizes on putting like 12 energy on a Pokemon and blowing you up. And there's also things like Mirage Gate, obviously. So I definitely think Magnazone EX isn't actually that bad. Um, you do have uh, Pulse Launcher, which does 220. So if you need a nice fallback attack, you do have that. It does work with Cheryl. And 330 HP is very high. Obviously, it's Duraludon EX high. And I actually have high hopes in Magnazone being not as bad as people are making it out to me. Is it, like, super good? Probably not. Don't think it's going to be meta tier 1. But I don't hate it. I don't think it's bad at all. I actually really like it. So, again, a lot of HP. 330 HP is a lot. And for one energy, you can do a lot of damage. Even if you're not one-shot stuff, just hitting hard with that much HP is insane. Next up, we got Flaffy. Nothing crazy. Obviously, the better Flaffy in the last format. New 60 HP Mareep just dropped, which is kind of sick. We got a new Pachirisu. This card's actually decent. Can't be paralyzed, but it's got the attack Group Zap that does 10 damage, plus 20 more damage for each of your bench landing Pokemon. This attack's damage isn't affected by weakness. So a nice little one prize beat stick. Some Maridenless do play this, which is kind of cool. So we'll definitely have to see if it sees play, um, but definitely not bad. Next up, we got 
some new Rodoms. I don't think they're anything crazy, of course. It's kind of mid. We do have a Junk Hunt Rodom, which is kind of funny that they nerfed Junk Hunt. Obviously, Sableye Junk Hunt is banned and expanded for a reason. Search your discard power for an item, reveal in your hand. Just gets one item. So it's not two. A new Toxtricity, you got Tear Off. Choose two cards from your opponent's hand without looking. Look at the cards, and then your opponent puts them in the deck. So it's Trevnor's attack, but does no damage. So as a control attack, maybe it could work. Who knows? It could be a fun control deck. Obviously, this card with Roxanne is kind of funny. If you Roxanne your opponent and use this attack, your opponent goes to zero cards in hand. So we'll have to see if this ends up working. Might not, but it might. Could be a fun meme for sure. Then we got... Palmo, and then we go into Palmot here. It is a stage two Pokemon with the ability to charge up once during turn, search deck for a basic lightning and attach it to this Pokemon, and then Electropod does 230 damage, and you have to discard all the energy. It does a lot of damage, has a pretty cool ability, more of just like a fun one prize deck more than anything else. Probably not gonna be Lost Box, probably won't be good, but it'll be a fun, fun one prize meme ladder deck, right? That's kind of the idea behind the card. We got Watchels here, then we got Kill a Watchel here with Skill Dive and Thunder Blast. Unfortunately, nothing too crazy. I think we are getting a uh, better Watchel in the next set, if I remember correctly. And we got a uh, Maraiden here, Maraiden, but it is actually a basic, not the EX. Um, the X is coming up. Of course, Lightning Laser doing 90, and then 3 damage to one of your points match Pokemon. Nothing too crazy. Pretty vanilla card. A lot of vanilla cards in the set, which is very disappointing. And then, of course, we have arguably the best EX in the set, Maraiden EX here. It's a pretty good card. We, of course, have the ability Tandem Unit, where once during your turn, you can search your deck for up to two basic Lightning Pokemon and put them on your bench. Basically, if you get this card down, you can fill your entire bench with Lightning Pokemon, because you can Maraiden for Maraiden, and then Maraiden, and just keep benching Pokemon, which is kind of ridiculous. And then, of course, you have Photon Blaster. That does 220 damage. And then during your next turn, this Pokemon can't attack. This card is obviously really good with Regilecki VMAX, good with Flaffy, and also very good with the new Electricity generator card that's coming out one of the best cards in the set is going to make this card even stronger it's a pretty good deck in japan it's one of the best decks in japan actually and this card could get better with the next set there's a new cape of toughness card coming out in the next set which actually puts maraiden in an even better position in the meta but it's definitely a decent deck it's good in japan lightning pokemon have a lot of pokemon to work with raikou regilecki v max flying pikachu v max is something that maraiden might have to start playing to counter the lost box but have high hopes in maraiden definitely going to be a pretty solid deck and probably top tier, because it's been doing good in Japan. Uh, we got to do Hypno with Pendulum Manipulation. Flip a coin to Fed. Choose one of your opponent's active Pokemon's attacks and use it as the attack again. If only there was a reflip card in the format. New Ralts. Not as good as the Ralts uh, with the uh, Switch effect and the other Ralts. New Curlia. Not as good as the other Curlias. And then, of course, we got Gardevoir EX. One of the best cards in the set. And maybe even the best card in the set, apart from Maraiden. But, of course, we got the ability Psychic Embrace here. As often as you like, during your turn, you may attach a Psychic Energy, basic Psychic, from your discard pile to one of your Psychic Pokemon. And if you do, you put your damage on it. You can't use ability if it would be knocked out by the ability. So basically, you can put your uh, the Pokemon up to 20 HP remaining before you KO them. And you know what? This ability is kind of insane. Uh, Gardevoir is doing really good in Japan. A lot of people think it might be BDIF. I don't think it's going to be quite BDIF, but it definitely is looking to be one of the top decks in the format. Gardevoir does have so much support. It's got a lot of psychic Pokemon to choose from, and you even have good Gardevoirs and Curlias to pair this with. I mean, there's a Curlia that lets you discard a card from your hand and draw two. There's the Mirage Step Curlia that lets you put other Curlias in play, and there's Gallades too, which are pretty good, and there's a Shiny Arcana Gardevoir. Gardevoir is looking to be an insane new deck. I'm excited to play it. It's definitely going to be the potentially the best deck out of the set, maybe behind Maraiden, but definitely Gardevoir is insane. There's so many psychic Pokemon to play this with. We'll just have to see how it does against stuff like Giratina and Arceus decks, and of course, Lost Box, and Gardevoir being weak to Dark is not doing any favors, um, because obviously there are a lot of good Dark Pokemon. Galarian Moltres from Evolving Skies has been seen play, and even Drapion, ironically, can be good against this. Drapion can be built up through Arceus or Mirage Gate, and they can attack your, or, or your Gardevoir, so... It does have a pretty bad weakness, kind of gets caught in the crossfire with Mew, which is still going to continue to be a very good deck in the format, pro rotation. But if the right Gardevoir list does well, and it gets adapted, kind of like where Lugia is right now, there could be a world where Gardevoir is totally fine, even with Dark Pokemon be good. This card also can't be Sky Seal Stone, which is one thing I kind of wanted to mention. Um, next up, we got Bayonet EX, another really cool card. Uh, we got Eternal Darkness for one. Psychic does 30 damage, and your opponent can't play any items. So Item Lock is back. Not as good as Vigavolt because it's on a stage one, so you have to wait a turn, which does give your opponent a free turn of items, which is definitely bad. And you also only do 30, and there's no modifiers. Vigavolt has modifiers. Bayonet does not have modifiers, and uh, that kind of sucks. But it does have the attack pull there, guys. Look at your opponent's hand. It does 60 damage for each trainer in their hand. So pretty strong attack to pair this attack with. So I'm interested to see if Bayonet will be good. I know people are really wanting this card to be good. I'm not buying into the hype, but I do want it to be good. It might even get better 
next set. It's second attack at least has really good synergy with the first attack. I don't think it's going to be Seismitoad part two, right? But who knows? Maybe it gets good down the road. And I mean, we have quite a while until this card will rotate and maybe we'll get a really good partner for it. It could be good in Gardevoir too, by the way. It could also be a good tech card in Gardevoir. So I just want to point that out. And of course, we got Drifloon. This actually looks to be a better card than even Drifblim. Drifloon's got Balloon Bomb, doing 30 damage for each damage on this poke, damage counter on this Pokemon. You pair this with Gardevoir, you can hit pretty hard. And with the new Cape card coming back, this card can do 300 damage next set. So when the new set comes out, Drifloon, surprisingly, will be really good with Gardevoir. And that's kind of cool. Drifloon actually legit is a good card. Um, and it's legit going to be good with Gardevoir in the next set when the new Cape of Toughness comes back. As then, yeah, Drifloon could do like 300 damage. And it still does, I think, what, 300? It does 180, I think, actually, right? Um, it, my math is correct. It does 180 or 210 damage um, right off the bat before the Cape card. And that's actually pretty good. So definitely keep your eye on Drifloon. This card legit could be a decent card in Gardevoir. Even Drifblim's kind of cool. Um, with spread curses, doing eight damage, putting eight damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon any way you like. Obviously, this could be a fun spread deck. Pretty good, obviously. Uh, we know that Sableye is a very strong card, and uh, this card isn't as strong as Sableye because it needs more energy. It's a stage one, and it's done less damage, but still, spreading eight damage is pretty good regardless. It could give you a win condition in Gardevoir, too, if you want to play like a, a 2 1 line of Drifblim. Kind of in the late game, could clean stuff up, pick stuff off. We got. New Floet here, nothing crazy. We got new Florges, however, with the ability Bloom Garden. As long as it is in play, your Pokemon have no weakness. Little cute ability there, nothing crazy. There's other Pokemon like that in the format. There's a Chandelure in the format, but that's not very good. So these abilities usually don't work. And then Moon Forest doing 120, and then damage is done by 30. So basically nothing crazy. Who knows? Maybe the ability will be fun. Maybe someone will figure out a way to play it. Who knows? Uh, next up, we do have some new Dedenes. Uh, nothing too crazy here. We got Klefki. This is another really good card. Arguably the best non-EX Pokemon in the set with the attack or the ability Prank Lock. Sorry, as long as this Pokemon is your active Pokemon, each player's basic Pokemon to play have no abilities other than Prank Lock. So the funny thing about this card is it actually shuts off some pretty funny abilities. It shuts off Comfy, shuts off Genesect V, which is insane. It even shuts off Luminion. Um, yeah, definitely a really strong card. I definitely think Klefki will be good. It's pretty annoying to play against, too. Um, decks that rely heavily on basic abilities will be shut off completely, and that is pretty fun. And I'm glad they printed this. It's a nice little checkmate. Not checkmate. Check card against Mew, sorry. Mew is obviously a very good deck. Path the Peak is good against Mew, but Mew is kind of adjusted to Path being good against it. And Klefki, I don't think they can adjust against right away. You can put two in play. You can dodge Escape Rope. They have to find Boss. Klefki, I, I really like. This is a very good card. A lot of decks can even play like one or two of these just to have them in play. It's a good Pokemon to open up with too, especially in those matchups where it's good. It also shuts off Maraidon. I want to note that too. Shut off Maraidon is pretty good too. But yeah, this card is pretty good. I, I know I'm missing other basic Pokemon. The big ones I wanted to note were like Comfy, Maraidon, and Genesect V, which are the big cards that Klefki will shut off. But yeah, Klefki is looking to be a pretty strong card. I definitely think you should get at least a play set of these when it comes out. It might be a little on the expensive side when it drops, but I definitely think you want to try to get a play set of Klefki if you can. Next up, we got Fido here and Dash Bun with the ability Well Baked Body. Prevent all damage done to this Pokemon by attacks from your opponent's uh, fire Pokemon. Now, if we're ever in a meta where fire Pokemon are good, this card could be good. But the problem is, fire Pokemon can use other attackers potentially, and we'll have to see on that. Honestly, this could be funny. Like, as a 1 1 line in a control deck, you actually could see this. Um, being okay right being able to like be not be damaged by fire pokemon could be kind of funny like in a control deck you know if you just so happen to get paired against a fire deck this legit could win you the game it's actually kind of funny how that works um next up we got asfara or ethra i think uh, bad with names i haven't played scarlet violet yet right but this card does have um insight that Retreat locks them, and then you got Psychic, which does 30 plus 50 for each energy on your opponent's active, so nothing too crazy. We do have some cool cards here. Graveyard, uh, the new Graveyard cards in Houndstone are pretty cool, of course. We got Graveyard doing 10 damage for each Psychic Pokemon in your discard pile. That alone is actually a pretty good attack. And then we got the Evolution here with Houndstone doing 80 plus 10 more damage for each Psychic Pokemon discard pile. I legit could see Houndstone being a decent one prize deck. Again, it might struggle against Sableye. 140 HP does help, though. You can't be killed by Cram or Sableye, which is kind of cool, but I like it. I mean, there's a lot of Psychic Pokemon in the game right now, and this is a pretty decent tech card, and even something like Gardevoir EX, considering you have Curlia, Ralts, Gardevoirs, and other Psychic Pokemon. This also is really cool with Mewtwo V Union, so really excited to play this card when it comes out. We got Annihilate here. A card that I'm actually really interested in. Now, it is a stage 2, but it does have a really strong attack with Enraged Fist. For a single fighting, it does 70 damage for each prize card taken by your opponent. So, this could be a really good late-game attacker. Now, I mean, your opponent does have to probably take 4 prizes for this to even one-shot, but 
again, I do like it. It's a pretty cool late game swing attacker, and it could help swing the prize trade. It's very similar to Galarian Moltres, which I think is already going to be pretty good in the new format. So who knows? Maybe this could be a legit decent card. Could be good in Arceus. We'll have to see. I'm excited for this. Being able to one-shot for one energy, don't underestimate that at all. Don't underestimate how strong this card can actually be. New Medicham. Forcing nothing too crazy, just locking the opponent from being able to attack nothing. Great. We got a new Lucario with the attack Vengeful Knuckles doing 30. If any of your funny Pokemon get knocked out during your opponent's last turn, you do 120 more damage. So you can do 150 for one energy. Again, nothing crazy. Uh, it is cool with the uh, Roaring Resolve Lucario, though. So it could be a good one of in that deck. So it's fine. Nothing great. Nothing bad either. It could be good with Roaring Resolve, right? And that's that's all that matters. We got a new Crocodile. I really want them to make a good Crocodile, man. Crocodile is a really cool Pokemon. One of my favorite Gen 5 Pokemon. And I love Gen 5. As you know, my favorite Pokemon is literally Hydreigon. But aside the point, we got Ferocious Bite doing 50. Flip a coin to get Tails for each head. Discard an energy on your opponent's active. Pretty funny attack. Unfortunately, again, Glib would no longer exist. And then we have Earthquake doing 180 and 30 damage to each of your bench Pokemon. I think this could be good GLC in the Earthquake deck. But in standard, it's just kind of weak. Uh, and we got Halucha. Really good card here. Uh, it's the new Galarian Goon. Flying Entry. When you place Pokemon from your hand on your bench, you may choose two of your opponent's bench Pokemon and put one damage counter on each of them. Now, this card is really cool. It's not as good as Galarian Zigzagoon in some regards, but it even can be better in some chances because in the Lost Box deck, you can play this with Sableye and actually use it to knock out opposing Comfies, and that's kind of dirty. This card is a pretty good card with Sableye. It's also just kind of good in general. Like, if you need that extra 10 damage boost, could work. You can play, obviously, this with Escape Rope and Boss to put that 10 damage on the Pokemon. So it's not the worst card ever. Um, we'll have to see. It's not very great with Gyarados CX, but again, that Rope Boss play could be kind of cool. This card could be good with Escape Rope. Again, being able to rope the Pokemon you want to put 10 damage on the bench is not bad. So pretty good card. I definitely think you should at least try to get two of these. When it drops, there is a pre-release promo of it, which thankfully I happen to get in my pre-release. But yeah, Halucha is pretty good. Um, next up, we got Sanaconda with Violent Dust Cloud. Discard two energy from this Pokemon, and then your opponent shuffles your active and all cards attached to it in their deck. Pretty funny card, unfortunately, way too costly. And not doing damage also doesn't help. I got a pretty bad Stone Journey here. We do have the new Great Tusk EX here. Bedrock Breaker doing four damage. You discard a stadium in play. One for 40, not bad. And then you have Giganto Tusk for three energy. Does 250 and then 50 damage to itself. It is a basic Pokemon with 250 HP. The first thing to note, very, very bulky Pokemon. And that does go a long way. You can also pair it with the new Coridon EX here. Now, Coridon is not as good as Maridon, but it is still decent with Dino Cry. Once you're in turn, you may attach up the two basic fighting from your discard pile to one of your basic fight fighting Pokemon in any way you like. And then you, your ability will end. Your, you use the ability, your turn ends. Yeah, so use the ability, your turn will end. And that can be problematic. Obviously, you don't want to end a turn. But going first, this actually is a pretty good card. You can use it to build up Great Tusk. You can build up yourself. You can build up other fighting Pokemon that exist in the format. Um, it's even got Wild Impact doing 220. Not a terrible attack either. 220 is a solid amount of damage to do. I definitely think this card is solid. Um, I don't think it's amazing. And it could get better. I mean, we have a long time until it rotates. And who knows what fighting Pokemon, Pokemon print by then, right? That is a pretty good sign for this card's potential in the future. New Muck. Uh, special condition, Poison does not remove when your opponent evolves, which I guess is cute. Would have been cool with Galarian Weezing if uh, <laughs> Weezing was still around. Uh, we got Spirit Tomb here with uh, Taunt. Choose one of your opponent's bench Pokemon, switch to active, and then Destruction Verdict, flip two coins. Both are heads, your opponent's active is KO'd. Again, no Glimma Tangle. Radiant Drachi is just infinitely better. New EX with Toxic Croak EX here with the attack Nasty Plot, where you can search check for up the two cards. And then you got Toxic Ripper doing 120. And your opponent's active Pokemon is now poisoned, and you can put six on it. You can combine this with Hisuian Radiant Sneasler to do more damage. So yeah, I definitely like it. I think this card is fine. It's not great. It's probably not amazing either. Um, the attack cost is a little too costly. You probably have to play with Double Turbo. It's mid. But I'm going to try it anyways because I like trying this out. I guess it has Dark Patch in the format. But, yeah, we'll see. It's it's a cool card. It's kind of mid. And we got King Gambit here. King Gambit. Pretty cool card, too. Uh, General Ship. As long as this Pokemon is in play, the attacks of your basic Pokemon do 30 more damage to your opponent's active. That's not bad at all. There's a lot of big basics you can play this with that legit could get a power boost from this card. Yes, it is a stage 2. But you want to play with Rare Candy or Dream Ball, you could go down that route. And I definitely think this card has potential... I think the ability is pretty solid overall. The 30 extra damage boost does help quite a bit. And again, there's a lot of bases you can choose from uh, with this card. It also stacks, it looks like, right? So you can stack this ability if you really wanted to. And those weird scenarios where that comes in handy, this legit could be decent. Um, we do have the new 
My boast tip here with Enraged Howling, once during your turn, you may leave your opponent's switcher active with one of their bench Pokemon. So a built-in mini escape rope as an ability. Not terrible. It is on a stage one, so it's not like a stage two, so it's easy to get into play. And the ability can be annoying to deal with. We'll have to see if this ends up seeing play on the fence on it, but maybe just pick one up if you want. It's not a bad ability, right? The ability is like semi-decent. Um, again, could be good with Halucha. Next up, we got Bombardier here. Uh, junk transport search check up the two tools but put them in your hand nothing crazy even with like pachirisu like tool drop it's not great or rodom wouldn't be good either new fortress go with the pineco we just saw at the very top shell rolling any damage done by the fighting pokemon during post next turn is reduced by 50 and yeah nothing crazy again the first attack could be fine fun if you had glimmer tangle we got Varum, and then we got Reverum here. Really cool new draw card. Rumbling Engine, you must discard energy from a hand in order to do this ability, and then once you're in turn, you may draw cards until you have six in your hand. That's a pretty strong ability. One more of them in barrel. Energy discarding for energy discarding uh, cards. Pretty solid stuff. This definitely is a good card. Um, maybe not right away. There's already, like, Bibarel and Greninja in the format, which kind of outclass it, but the engine is pretty good, and I definitely think this card has potential to be decent in the format. I would definitely say maybe look into picking up a playset of these when it drops because at least it is a pretty solid card right and in the future it could legit be good there might be some cool partner that does drop with it i mean if it can be good right away you never know so definitely pretty solid card i would definitely pick up as many of these as you can the ability is pretty solid and we got iron Tread zx with triple laser doing 30 damage to each of your opponent's pokemon manaphy exists cybernetic wheel doing 160 switch it pretty costly attack just nothing too crazy also metal saucer rotating doesn't help this card uh, we got a new Blissey, Nurse on Duty. Once during your turn, you may heal all special conditions from your opponent's active Pokemon. Or from your active Pokemon. Sorry, your opponent's. Why did I say that? Your active Pokemon. Special conditions are not great. I guess if you're playing against Tuxedo EX, maybe it is. Uh, Blissful Cyclone is cool. 150, moving all energy to this to one your bench Pokemon actually isn't a bad attack. Um, if you build it up, you can conserve energy. I legit don't hate the attack. This is actually isn't the worst card on the planet. Um, for that reason alone, you know. New Star Raptor. Nothing crazy. Spin away. During your opponent's next turn, prevent all damage on this Pokemon by basic Pokemon. So, another, like, basic immune Pokemon. It is a stage 2. It's, like, the new Obstagoon. It does work with double turbo. The problem is you do 40 instead of 60. 60 is actually not bad numbers to hit. Um, nothing crazy. Being a stage 2 kind of sucks, but it could be funny against Lost Box. So, we'll have to see on that one. We got Skewbit. Really cool card here with Heidi Hole. Once your turn, you may use the ability, shove your hand, and put it at the bottom of your deck, and then draw a card. This ability is really, really good with Bit Barrel, um, as you can just put your hand down to one and then draw four cards. So this with Bit Barrel is a legit decent draw engine. The problem with it is, again, it's Sableye food, so you gotta be really careful, but this with the Barrel, again, is pretty solid. So I definitely like it. And it's even good with Mustard. So I'm gonna keep that in mind, too. New Greedent. This Pokemon's a tool on it, it's 160, nothing crazy. Skewvit's better than Greedent, which is kind of ironic. New Indeedy, search deck for a card that evolves one of your Pokemon to play and play it on that Pokemon to evolve. So we've seen this attack before on cards like Diancie. Not crazy, I mean, it's a little too slow for the format, but who knows? It could be decent. Who knows? I, I don't know. It, it's decent, but the format's kind of too fast for it. Uh, next up, we have Oinkalone here. This legit could be a good deck. Um, it's doing decent in Japan. It's a very big tank deck. 260 HP on a stage 1 Pokemon with the attack. Fragrance Fury doing 10 plus turn more damage for each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. So it does quite a bit of damage and heavy stamp this 210. Flip a coin of heads, this Pokemon can't attack. So the idea behind this card is you play with Cheryl and Sharon's Care. You may have a very, very tanky heal deck, and it probably does really good against Lost Box. And that is one of the big selling points of this card is it kind of farms Lost Box. Is it a good deck? I'm not too sure if it's that good, but... Honestly, its results in Japan haven't been terrible, and that's a pretty decent sign. This legit could be an all-right deck in the format. We'll have to see on that one. It's probably going to be the new tank heal deck. And then we got Mousehold here with Family Attack doing 70 damage for each of your Mousehold in play. So if you have 4 in play, you do 280. You have to play Double Turbo, though, which means you're doing 260. If you get a bunch of Mouseholds in play, this legit could be solid. Um, the only problem is one Mousehold goes down, you got to get another one in play. So you have to probably play with Zoark, I think, right? So... We'll have to see on that because yeah if you use a mouse hole with this your your uh your tandem mouse gets killed with this you have to bench another one and then you're back to doing 210 damage right or 190 with a double turbo we got squawk ability squawk ability here sorry nothing too crazy it's got a call for family but that's it it flies okay flip a coin of tails you know it does nothing but if heads you prevent all effects of attacks gloom damage under it so it's a meme card not great again gloomwood's gone um 
more like just fillery vanilla cards. Get into the items now in trainers. Quite a few good ones in this set. You got Arvin here. Search your deck for an item and a Pokemon tool. Reveal them, put in your hand. The big thing with Arvin is tools are now eroded. They're no longer considered items. They're classified as now tools. So you can't use Irida to get a tool. You have to use Arvin now. Arvin is a decent one of in a lot of decks. Getting an item's good. Getting a tool is decent. There's some good tools. Obviously, Choice Belt being pretty good is a great reason to play this. And just getting an item is good. You get like a ball card. Um... Yeah, a lot of things you can grab. This card definitely is a good one to have. And definitely pick up a playset of these if you can. Some decks will just play one or two of these naturally. Beach Court, another fantastic stadium. Retreat cost of each player's base Pokemon is one colors less. Sky or Bridge Part 2, baby. Yeah, pretty good in Lost Box, right? That's the big selling point of this card is it's pretty decent in Lost Box. Um, yeah, kind of good in Lost Box. Lost Box loses net, but gets Beach Court, which is a pretty good trade-off. It's good in other things, too. Um, giving, like, a free retreat pivot is good. It's good with, like, Klefki and stuff. Crushing Hammer got reprinted. Boo. Boo. And we got Defiant Band here. If you have more prize remaining than your opponent, the attacks of the Pokemon this card is attached to do 30 more damage. Pretty solid card. I mean, we've seen these type of uh, fall behind in prizes type effects be good before, and this is another decent one. It's also going to work against EXs. That's kind of the big thing, is that Choice Belt doesn't work against EXs. This does work against EX Pokemon. That's pretty relevant, and that is something to consider when building your deck. Electricity Generator, another fantastic card. One of the reasons why uh, Maraidon is going to be so good. Look at the top five cards of your deck. Choose up two basic landing energy, attach them to your bench landing Pokemon any way you like, and then shuffle the rest into your deck. So, really strong, really strong card. I mean, two energy is ridiculous. Now, if you don't get two energy, it's fine. Even just one energy is honestly perfectly fine. Uh, you can play this with something like Switching Cups. This, by the way, would have been nuts if Guru existed, but yeah, Guru is rotating at maybe a perfect time. Yeah, really strong card. I mean, there's a lot of Lenny Pokemon you can play this with. Raichu V, you know. Raichu V. I don't know. I like it. Definitely a really strong card. One of the best cards in the new set. Um, and it's going to be the reason why Mariah is good. You definitely need a play set of these. And we got Energy Retrieval coming back. Um, Superior Energy Retrieval is also coming back in the next set. There's going to be two big Energy Retrievals in the format. Uh, we've got Energy Search back, Energy Switch back, EXP Share back. Yay. we got Jack. Search your deck for up to two evolutions. Put them in your hand. Benefit of this is it might be okay in, like, a Gardevoir deck, but other than that, it's probably just kind of mid. We got Judge coming back. Really good card to come back. This basically replaces Marnie for the time being until we get Iona, or Iono, whatever. I forget what the, the name is in the next set. The end reprint, right? And this is actually good in the format. I mean, play this with the barrel. You have yourself a pretty good engine. Also, really good against Lost Box. Just constantly judging Lost Box is going to be really, really big. And it's one of the reasons why Judge is looking to be a pretty solid card in the uh, rotation. Like, most decks might, except for Lost Box, play at least two or three of these. Even four. We got Katie. Using this card into your turn. Shove your hand in your deck. Draw eight cards. If only it didn't end the turn. Honestly, a pretty strong effect, though. Being able to draw eight is good. I mean, on your second turn, this is actually a pretty solid card if you do not get judged. We got Mesa uh, Gosa, which is another really strong stadium. Once during each player's turn, that player may flip a coin of heads. They search your deck for a Pokemon, reveal it, and put them in their hand. So, really strong stadium card. It's a free Pokemon search on a coin flip. Now, there are a few downsides. Yes, it's on a coin flip. And two, your opponent can play it, too. So, that kind of is bad. Sometimes your opponent can play this card and take advantage of the effect. So, it's not the perfect card to have, but it definitely is a really strong card regardless. We'll have to see what decks play it. I'm glad that we did get two good stadiums in the set because... I mean, the stadiums are kind of mid. We got Lost City, Collapse, and then you have Path, which is just a really broken card. So it's nice to see they are printing powerful stadiums to help counter something like Path, which could be a very dominant stadium, which was bad for the game. Uh, we got Miriam, which is an interesting card. Basically, the, the Pokemon recovery card that we have right now until we get Super Rod in our next set. Miriam here. Choose up the five Pokemon for this card. Reel them, shuffle them in your deck, and then draw three cards. So... Pretty strong supporter. Drawing three is actually a really cool benefit. It's one of the things that makes this card not totally unplayable. And maybe even better than, like, Yell's Cheer. And then we got Nemoma, the new draw three. Nest Ball coming back, obviously replacing Quick Ball. You gotta get yourself a play set of these. Most decks are gonna play four to three of these, so definitely pick up as many as you can. Palpad coming back, pretty solid too. And then we got Penny. Return one of your base Pokemon and play an all card attached to it into your hand. This could be good with something like Luminion V. Also could be good with other basic V Pokemon you want to heal. Could be good with Eternit Radiant Eternatus. So, not a bad card. Definitely at least get at least one or two of these. It's not terrible. Um, Picnic Basket. This is a hilarious card. Actually, not even bad. Heal 30 damage from all Pokemon in play. You can use this to help counter Inteleon VMAX, but the big thing is this card counters uh, Zorak V-Star. And literally, if Zorak V-Star is ever going to become one of the best decks in the format, this card quite literally auto wins the matchup. You, your opponent puts Zoark in play. They fill their entire board with damage. Then you play Picnic Basket. Then all that damage they just put into play with Gabe Jabog is gone. 
and you win the game, basically. It is so stupid. <laughs> but it's actually not even bad. It's good against Lost Box, and it actually isn't bad against Inteleon, and even it's a good tech card in Gardevoir EX. So, yeah, this card is legit decent. Uh, then we got Pokeball coming back. Obviously not good. Catcher coming back. Yeah, it's okay. Gear coming back is kind of cool, too. I'm glad about that. Potion mid. Research coming back, obviously, is a big deal. We got Research and End coming back, basically. It's kind of neat. And then Rare Candy, obviously, had to get reprinted. We got Rock, Chestplate. The fighting Pokemon this card is attached to takes three less damage from attacks from your opponent's Pokemon. Pretty good with Karidon and, like, Urshifu or any other fighting Pokemon, you know. The great Tusky X, right? Rocky Helmet, eh, kind of mid. Nothing crazy. I mean, I guess it works against the Xs, but that's not going to work. You know, it's not going to be good. Switch coming back. Team Star Grunt. Put an energy attached to your opponent's active on top of their deck. So another energy removal-esque card. Good for control decks, right? Ultra Ball coming back. Vitality Band's interesting, too. Um, I guess, again, it works against the Xs. We got Shauna coming back with Youngster. And then, of course, we have all, like, the Secret Rares and all that good stuff. Um, Nest Ball Gold is sick. Obviously, there's the Sun and Moon one. I think I like this art more, though. It's a little bit more vibrant. Rare Candy is cool, too. I don't know which rare candy art I prefer. Probably the Plasma Blast one. Let me know down in the comments. What what rare candy art do you prefer? There's three now. You got this, Plasma Blast, and then Guardians Rising. Which rare candy art are you going to rock? I mean, on PCG Live, you get them for free, right? You don't have to pay an arm and a leg for these anymore. Um, and yeah, that's Scarlet and Violet. Obviously a pretty decent starting set. Um, there's a lot of cool cards. There's a lot of vanilla stuff too. Like, I would say half of the set is playable. The other half is just kind of filler, bad cards. The rest, half is like playable to like, a fun rogue, and then again, the, the rest of the, the set is, like, just unplayable trash. But definitely a fun set. I'm excited for it. The, to open up the new generation of Pokemon is going to be exciting. I'm so excited for this set. Let me know down in the comments below what card are you most looking forward to in the set. I would love to hear it. Thanks for watching. Uh, yeah, subscribe if you haven't already to the second channel, and I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.